Hello everyone. And welcome to another wonderful episode of the Talking Stick Show. My name is Destiny, and I've been asked to introduce today's panel. Okay, so today, we have on hand, the galactic historian, Andrew Bartsis, along with Dale Tobin, from the Symmetry of Health. He is accompanied by Laura Massey, from Two Feathers Medicine, and Maddie Waller. Finally, we have David Ellis, from Unified Health Systems, who is also my dad. Today's show, will be focusing on the combined healing system, which is now available to folks in the UK. We want to urge you to try to take advantage of this huge opportunity, for a healing experience, which is like no other. If you need further information about the system, you can scan the barcode which is right next to my head and this will take you to an air deck where you can learn all the scientific and esoteric principles which makes this system so effective. Okay, everyone. Enjoy the show, and take care. Hello, hello, hello everyone and welcome to the Tuesday night or Tuesday morning, Tuesday evening, wherever you are in the world, the Talking Stick Show. So I am joined by these panel of beautiful people we have this evening. So I'd like to firstly introduce the alchemist, Matty Waller to the show. Hello, brother. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. And we'd like to introduce Laura Quickie Massey. Hello, Laura. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, Dale. <laughs> How are you today, Laura? How are you feeling? Really good. Really excited to be here. Yes. Good. Thank you. And we have Lily on the show. Hello, Lily. Hi. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. And do you want to introduce yourself a little bit about yourself? Uh, you came on the show a few months back, but for those listening who don't know who you are, just a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. So um, I experienced the combined therapy up in York um, this summer. So I've come on just to talk a bit about my experience with that. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to like exploring that all with you guys. Great to have you on, Lily. And Sam, welcome to the show. Ah, oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, I'm Sam, and I've been to combined therapy twice. One was the first, I just did the one day, and then I've just recently come back doing two days. <laughs> Outstanding, and how are you feeling? Uh, like I can fly. <laughs> <laughs> so we've just, with me, Laura, Matty have just done a combined therapy. What date did we finish on, guys? What was it? Oh, Dale. Oh, yeah, exactly. Last, <laughs> <laughs> go, last anyway. Thursday. Last Thursday. <laughs> we all finished the combine. We did six days of combined all together. Yeah. We had a few people on, and it was absolutely mind blowing. And for me, as a practitioner, as someone evolving all the time, the levels of understanding, the levels of awareness from using that system time after time, it expands and it expands. So for me, my mind was blown even more about how deep this system can go into the core of who you are. And it can go into all of those places where you've been avoiding or energy is stuck or dense energy and so on. And it, it can be drawn out of you over those days. And I've seen some incredible life changing experiences from me doing the psychic surgery along, in, in, alongside an incredible team of people. Like we have David, Laura, Matty, Andrew. I, some of the greatest people I know and, and great friends and 
I am amazed by it, guys. Like I've the first time I did it was only in Scotland. I only started going under the light doing soul surgery. And my expansion and my knowingness from using that Lucia light, the PMF mat, all of the therapies combined has just completely blown me away. Uh, so I'd like to bring Laura uh, to start with. Uh, so what has it been like for you and your process of combined therapy and, and being a practitioner as well? I love it because every time we do it, we also get a healing. We also get um, to experience how good this system is. And you've got to say hats off to David and Andrew because they're the designers of this system and no one else in the world is doing it, has done it like they've done it and are still doing it because they're still looking at how how they can improve this system, how we all can. So I'm really honoured to be part of this team who is taking this forward. Um, the whole experience is absolutely mind-blowing, as you said, Dale, to see the changes um, in Lily, in Sam and others. I think Richard, who's coming on tonight, everybody who's been through the system that we've seen has had these incredible changes that they're able to carry forward into their life. And it's not like, oh, we're, we lay on the table, you know, we'll wave our magic wand and, and, you know, if you can't walk, you'll get up and walk. We're not saying it's like it's a cure, but it's pretty. It's, it gives you a better quality of life, and it's it's pretty close to sorting out so much of the trauma that's held in the body. That's what it's about. It's releasing the trauma from the body and getting the body relaxed enough that it can accept the healing. And the other thing is the co-creation, like we had with Lily, like we had with Sam. And Richard, people who are joining in for their own healing and helping us as well. So the whole experience is wonderful. And I can't wait to do the next one and get the next lot of people through the system. It's just amazing. Beautiful, Laura. Matty? Right. Well, I, I could go on and on and on about this particular subject. I'll try not to. Um, so as a healer, from that perspective, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm high functioning as it is. Um, there's not a lot that I, I, I can't turn myself to. Um, and so those skills, it's like, you know, it's like being a, being a racing driver who has a Ferrari. That's, if you could imagine, that's what I'm like in my day-to-day -day life. When you put me in front of these tools, it was like someone give me a motherfucking spaceship, you know? <laughs> and it was like, it was like, <laughs> oh my god! You know, I, I, you know, I had to go in it and learn how to walk into it. I had to learn how to, I had to learn how to basically use the controls. And then all of a sudden, you learn up and down, shoof, shoof, right? And then all of a sudden, it's like left, right. So it's you know, for me, it, it, it it's so difficult to explain. It gives me more scope, but not that I couldn't go to that scope anyway. It allows me instant access to it. So it gives me more range, more scope instantaneously. Not only that, it allows me to um, do what I need to do, bringing all of the certain frequencies, connections, do the skim, take off the bits that need to be taken off. But then it's the rapport that we've built with the machines themselves. And so we know where the point is, right? The machine's like, right, I've got this, guys. And that bit is very, very important as well. So it's the point where, you know, I say, right, that's enough of the psychic stuff. Now we're just holding space, observing and allowing the machinery itself to do what it needs to do. Just as important as all of the skillful stuff that we do. But every time that I use this technology, I grow and I grow and I grow. And that what I use on the technology, I can then translate to my mono practice as well. Um, so it's a win, 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 win situation. And that's from the perspective of a healer for me as being a healer not not the results i've seen that's i mean we could talk about that all night we've got a lot of time to talk about that Thank <laughs> you, um david ellis i want to bring you in now because so at the beginning of this dream and the start of the dream of the combined therapy what was it like for you kind of through the years your development and understanding experience under it what what was it like for you from the start to the now what are some of the kind of processes you've gone through with it realizations and so on uh, this started when I met Andrew, right? This really weird um, psychic guy um, <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. I was about to say, uh, who had a bunch of ideas about health, right? But um, Andrew and I think alike on certain um, subjects. 
And I was listening to it and I had gone very far in therapy in my own right, right? Everybody's got paper doing this course, that course, and another thing. What we are trying to do is only concentrate on the things that work definitively <laughs> for everybody, not for one person or some kind of person. We are essentializing the things that work. So whenever somebody asks me about the system, as an example, what I tell them is, stop for a second, imagine what you would be like without the shit. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Imagine what you would be like without the shit. We are adding to the system, right? But that's basically what it is. We take the shit out, <laughs> leaving what's left. What you is know, the shit, David? You know, you? <laughs> those who are unaware of the shit, what is the shit? The shit is the trauma. It's the bad diet. It's the stuff clogging you up. It's all like, because the thing about it is that a lot of people, when they hear these therapies and they think of them in isolation, okay, they think of them in isolation. So you say, oh, I go to the infrared once a week, you know, I get a little, you know, whatever. If your mind and your spirit is not involved in the health and healing process, what sense does it make cleaning out the body? It's kind of like saying, I'm just going to wash my body, but I'm going to leave from the neck up unwashed. So you're in the shower like this. So that's basically <laughs> what that is, right? So you could spend um, days, weeks without uh, like shampooing your hair, right? So that's basically what it is. I think a lot of people, when, it think, when they think about the healing system, what we're trying to do is make a series where you detoxify through your body, right? Through your mind and so on. And um, we leave what's left when what's left is you. Because when I take out the toxins underneath your skin, that is an encumbrance. And I'm talking to you watching this broadcast, you who's sitting there with your iPad or your computer and so on. I'm talking to you, okay? You are encumbered. You just don't realize you're encumbered because it's become the new normal for you. Now, if I took the stuff out of you <laughs> and you started floating around the house, right? And you realize, what the hell? I feel angelic all of a sudden. Then you would know the difference between toxified and not toxified because you have traumas that are built in and more people don't understand it. It's a, it's a psychosomatic connection as well. So let's say as an example, you experience a trauma from an accident for or something bad when you were three years old it embeds itself it wedges itself into your body it absolutely does i wish judy inameth was here because she could tell you a little bit more about that you actually develop a freeze sensation inside some place in your body well, that freeze sensation is going to be a problem for you it's going to restrict your mobility it's going to restrict how you move for the rest of your life a lot of people don't realize that and i'm going to get all personal here there are a lot of women in the audience, so I'm going to get all personal here. Like, just the just the sexual reaction, as an example, that by itself builds up scar tissue. Does that make any sense to you guys? Yes. Right. All the trauma that women experience, because we all are like, yeah. Forget about the men. Forget about the men for a moment, right? Just growing up and being a woman in society, you are going to experience trauma, no matter who you are. Yeah, almost yes. every time I work on the light, David, I have to go. I have to go or the, or the system mm -hmm. on any feminine. There's always work to be done around the sacred feminine area. It's it's, yes. it's every single one. Yes, because there are targets in, this, in society depending on on where they are, right? And yeah. they have a choice. The choice is to either harden themselves, which is never a good thing. Once you take that path. Self-hardening is very hard to, you, you traumatize yourself. And, okay. and there's um, just a quick thing to add to that, David, along connecting to the sexual stuff, is even like yourself, say if you're in a relationship and you're denied sexuality, you're denied where they basically turn off from you, it creates a sexual rip inside of you and creates trauma into the fascia around the, the female areas. And I've seen it in myself, I've seen it in other people, so it's not only just that, it's when people deny you're in a relationship, 
where you truly want a sexual experience and the person just saying no, no, no. That I've seen a lot of that being built up, and this is yeah, so much um, exploring to do here. Thank you, David. So for 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 the Ben and I, I love the way this um this panel is laid out. You got Matty, you got a little line, a little V line, a little anyone ever mind. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh for men who are listening to this broadcast let me take you through an exercise i'm about to give you a womb and a vagina and let's just take you through a little bit of an exercise so that you understand it is different when it is that you are a woman specifically because uh the concept of receptacle or being invaded so to speak so to speak requires trust does it not yes you see the difference yes but they don't get that so i used to teach a class um years ago a yoga class uh where i gave the men you know the whole um vagina and womb thing and in the trans states they understood so this is how scott tissue develops because what happens is that you have negative experiences it doesn't have to be sexual experiences just the thought of it and the body goes into freeze in aspects of the body okay you don't realize that the freeze is there unless there is something called a trigger that real makes you realize oh shit there's a freeze there right it may be something as simple as a flinch or whatever else and a lot of people don't get that so they don't understand the mind body connection that flinching or that freeze that frozen area in your body is not only just going to freeze for the trigger it remains frozen forever unless you detect it and unfreeze it and a lot of people walking around with freeze i see it now because you guys are therapists you can see it right like they're walking down the road i'm like i could fix that you frozen yes you know you don't you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's a t-shirt right. that I can fix. <laughs> right, right there, you froze it. You don't, you don't, you, I, you don't want to be doing that. You don't want to be the weird person at the at the New Year's Eve party saying, "Hi, do you realize that you're frozen?" And it might have something to do with some trauma that you experience you, while they while they're eating their orders or whatever else. You don't want to be that guy, but yeah. it's readily evident. A lot of people are walking around hampered. They don't even realize that they're hampered because it's the new normal for them. So yeah. I usually give people exercises to do to demonstrate how hampered they are. As an example, how many people watching this broadcast right now can touch their toes comfortably? <laughs> okay, so you can touch your toes comfortably. I see. How many people can stand up in front of a wall, reach behind, and turn the torso without turning the hips and put their hand on a wall? How many people can do that? <laughs> because you see, you're thinking that this is just like elementary, like lots of people can't do that, David. Let me tell you when it becomes important, however. <laughs> when you're driving down the road, you want to get the purse out of the back seat, right? But while you're reaching, you sneeze and slip a disc because you lack the flexibility. But it's a simple thing that happens. So all of these things become relevant. And you know what? You are The reason why you damaged yourself is because you've frozen all up inside here. Because power has been taken from you. So you've done this to freeze up yourself. So everything is like tight in here. For the women yeah. that are wearing imaginary corsets. 24 hours a day walking around sucking your stomach in you guys are in danger of that, danger of that because you'll have body positivity issues you guys are in danger of that listen to this yeah. very carefully because a lot of y'all are doing that y'all are walking around with the imaginary corset that's not there i could see it like i could see the corset but like just let it out let it out sister nobody cares All right nobody's going to judge you Okay, people. David, can I segue? Can I segue into something here? Because yes. you said something at the beginning, and it was such an important point. And you were saying, you know, because we we could speak all night about individual different traumas and different because there are so many different types of things that we encounter on doing this therapy. You sound so excited but, about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just you can see the excitement in me. And I, I, I just, I'm so made up in it. But I um I put myself through the through through the system this time way more than I have done in the past. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I am breathtaken by the personal results. And, and, and there's something that you said, you know, that how would it feel like to be without the shit, right? And that for me, I, I couldn't put mine on one specific trauma. I couldn't nail it down and say, this is what caused it or that's what caused it. It was a, a succession of micro traumas and macro traumas built up over 40 odd years that just created this background noise that permeated everything. Mm. And I wasn't even aware that it was there. It, even though I still progressed, I still managed to crack on with my life. I still managed to have friendships, loves, losses, all that stuff and live a successful life. Um, there was this background noise there. And when I came home from York this time, and I walked in the house into my normal environment and I realized the background noise was gone. Yeah. And yeah. I cried my eyes out, David, right? And on my heart, I cried. I said, thank you. I was like, I'm free. And I mean it. And, you know, and it was like, yeah. I didn't realize I'd my whole life that I'd been there. And to feel it, it gone and to see my life ahead of me is something I can't even explain to people. So when you said that one statement that, well, how do you think it would feel to not have the shit? Now, I'm a living proof of that. You know, and, and I, I don't see and Sam, so I feel what that feels brother. like. I know exactly. Yes. I got a light just outside. I, I'm, I'm forever on that light. Like, yeah. I'm like a poster child for what that thing could do. <laughs> All right. And yeah. then I've been experimenting in the thing. lab of my own body. It's when you remove the shit and your head is clear. Like, it's like wind blowing through your, your skull. Like cool breeze blowing through your skull. I know exactly oh, what you mean, my man. Please, but you can see on the on the uh, faces of people it is the best when you see them come out and they've got that glow where you're like, oh, "What the fuck? What? Holy shit! Look what's yeah. happened to you!" And they just light up the room. They come in and the the faces lighten up the room. And it, everyone who goes through the system at the end of it, you're like, "Holy shit! You look like you've lost five years, six years." No, but the best bit there is is not is that is e e after each therapy they have that look. Holy shit! What just happened? And then we yeah. grab them and put them onto something else. Yeah. And then they have another one, and then they have the same look, and then we grab That's them and then January, we put them on something else. Oh, will, and this is this is the essence of go, it. Go ahead, Can I just, can I just say ahead. as well, it doesn't stop when you drive away. Like even like now all week. Every single day, I'm getting an ancestor come in and give me tokens. My body's showing me something else that I need to work on. I'm seeing something else. In my dreams, every single night, even now, I'm getting loads of different things happening to me. So it's not just whether you go one or two days or what you do. It, it ha it's still happening. Uh, it doesn't stop. There were beautiful yeah. Sam and so, yeah. we, so we're going to go a lot more into your experience and Lily's experience soon but another thing I wanted to mention and a funny thing was do you remember Richard's face when he got up from the Lucia light after like an hour under it it was the funniest <laughs> thing I've ever seen and we were all literally <laughs> ourselves. It, he came out and looked around went what the fuck like is that his face was like, <laughs> like holy shit where, what was that like, <laughs> it feels like a hundred years sometimes yeah. you? you're, you're yes. away you come into a room and you're like wow that was distant what the hell the thing is as well it's not just the Lucia light is brilliant absolutely amazing but what makes us different I think David alluded to it at the beginning is its combination so we can have you on the mat like Sam did with magnets and the Lucia light or you can be under the Lucia light and having cranial sacral therapy and cranial sacral therapy works brilliantly with psychic surgery so everything we're doing absolutely complements the other treatment that's going on and it's following an infrared sauna and a float. So you come out. Will you tell us how you came out, Sam, from the infrared and the float before you went on the table? Oh, what, the second day? Well, I was able to do a whole load of inner work that, yeah. I've never, yep. that I hadn't been able to face for 24, 23 years. Yeah. So, 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 Sam, can I just say, so it might be a good idea with that question from Laura to go into your start of the experience and go through mm. your full experience of it and, and go through it day by day. So should I start with the first time? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. So, yeah, yeah. So I was so nervous coming in. I had to like do these breathing exercises before I come in. It's like this wave come over me. Uh, it was, yeah. And then came in, obviously you guys are just the best. 
and so <laughs> friendly and loving and kind and yeah and then I first of all started on the Lucia light first of all with Andrew and um I I didn't have any expectations whatsoever and so quite frankly I hadn't even done any research I just knew I had to come as soon as you guys put it out I I felt like I contacted you immediately and then um I there was so much resistance from my body and I didn't feel that resistance myself and it was such a new feeling I couldn't understand it and then Andrew kept saying just let it go let it go but it's hard, really hard, difficult to understand because I didn't know it was there. So I didn't know how to let it go, if that makes sense. So then Andrew was teaching me how to really breathe through it and then let it go. And then, like I said um, in my testimony, Andrew then put the Lucia light on my stomach area. So then that really helped to let it go. So then I was able to then, first of all, meet my inner child and go on the journey then with my inner child. And we were playing with dollies and get, getting that side of me that I'd, I, I hadn't been in touch with for a really long time. It become way too serious, stick up my ass. And then um, met the lioness. And um, I mean, An Andrew was just Im immense because... Because of what he can see, he can see what the potentials are. So then with the lioness, um, feeling freedom and running through the fields and feeling all the sensories, like your whole body's then breathing. You Like what you are, like for me, I was getting geometry um, shapes and I was getting my psychic abilities on what I was seeing, but then also experiencing my body experience in it. And I could see my pores opening up and breathing like this freedom then we went down and then to the river and she showed me me as the lioness and then we went side to side together and that was so emotional because it was heart to heart and that oneness and I just couldn't I've never felt oneness like that before and just the heartbeat coming together and then um this is funny as well so then more lionesses come through to take me to the tribe to go meet everybody to be reintegrate and two other um lions came not not of this earth they were fascinating one like had a flower from the head and you kind of connect each other with the flowers from the head one was black with all these fluorescent color markings on top on them and you know, so then we were at the top of the hill and all the lions were waiting for me and they were roaring, but there was still that part of me that just wouldn't go. So then the one of the lionesses just whacked me in the arse. So I literally nearly fell down and, and then joined them. And then we all had this big, huge roar. And then we had, then Dale had come in. Oh no, I had another instance. Thing is, is if I tell you everything, we'll be here all night. It's it's like, yeah, yeah, exactly. I was about to say that's literally just one session, and yes. then she had multiple. No, no, so, no so let's not try even and the end of the session. So, the so the <laughs> light, six, we've got a lot so of time. The light, I had six different experiences. Should we just say wow. that? Yeah. Wow. So then, from there, then went straight, and then I remember Dennis. So. Again, synchronicity of spirit. I went with Dennis the first time, and then the second time he went as well. So that was really cool. Right. We so hello, Dennis. He's watching. Hey, Dennis. Yeah, we experienced it together. He's the most beautiful, loving, kind. Oh, so I love him. So yeah, then I went on to the float, and the lionesses were teaching me how to roar in my stomach, and um, lots more. Then I went with the gun and this um cranial sacral Be therapy specific. what gun the massage gun okay, the bang <laughs> <laughs> just to clarify just to clarify <laughs> this <laughs> okay, ai yes. massage yes. gun <laughs> yes if you're down the range <laughs> yes a massage gun yes and um <laughs> 
Yeah, and then going through all my fashions and my hips from where I, with my son, I was so worried about being a single parent and there was all that worry in there. The next day they were black, my hips with and my ankles were black from um the bruises but again because you're going through all this healing when you get all your bruising and st stuff coming out of your body it heals so fast so like within two days it's gone so it can seem really dense and look really dense within your body and look really traumatic but there isn't the traumatic side to it and it's then release like, trauma. it's release of trauma yes yes from yeah yeah, it, yeah, yeah. We, we weren't rough with the gun it yeah. is what we're saying it's it's releasing something really deep isn't it yeah also, yeah. Um, yeah what i wanted to add sam to that was so we, we'll t talk about the gun for a second and sam's experience because it was mind-blowing what happened so that was her first experience we did the gun again so she did two days uh, and we did the gun each day before and after. And it got to the last day and I could just feel something was going to pop out. It, it, I, I just had this feeling something was going to happen. Then I started going in on her thighs and she started, like, could you you go over what, what that experience was, what, what happened with the gun on the couch? So the first time, the first day of the second experience, I was like, <laughs> I, I've got quite a high threshold of pain. So I was like, I've got this. It's fine. There was areas that it was tight, but it was like, I've got this, it's okay. Day two, no, that's a different experience mm -hmm. because more everything had come out. And then it was like, it's like dragon skin with the scales and then watching it move. So then because you've gone through all the different modalities, my psychic side was like, it was so strong that yeah. I could then see everything that I've put in my body and I, and I'm still getting it out now. Um, so it's like all these blades in my, um, in my legs. Yeah. And so poor Dale, I, I kicked him. I'm very sorry. It wasn't um, the first time I got kicked. <laughs> I was like, it wasn't a hard kick though. It was, it was good. <laughs> but I was able, like when it was coming out, like to use my voice and, to scream but it was because at, when I have when I had the trauma I wasn't able to be vocal so mm -hmm. and like a, the synchronicity with great spirit I mean I've got two divine masculine men holding me down with unconditional love and it's just flipping that it was just beautiful just and was... I couldn't have felt any more safe any more protected and any more cared for so, so so guys as i as we did the gun it wasn't a scream of pain like pain the gun's hurting it was a scream of the traumas coming out of me yeah it was such a different scream to that fucking hurts stop booing that gun it was a yeah like the scream was so and it's the wrong word saying beautiful but it was so unique and lovely to see it start just coming out that way where you were like finally screaming it out of you and i was like holy fuck it, yeah, yeah. I give some people some advice if you guys are yes. going to buy one of these this is a massage gun in case you're wondering <laughs> if you're going to buy one of these i'm going to give you some advice um you need to target the areas well depends actually now that i think of it you need to target the areas which are restricting your movement and your release so as an example you could do a self check. Let's say you go into trance, you sit down on the chair, and you decide, oh, you know what? I'm just going to see what hurts. Because a lot of people have things that hurt. They just don't realize it. Mm. If it's a bone that hurts, please don't put this on the bone, just so that we're clear. All right? Yeah, you no bones. <laughs> please don't put it on the bone. Put it on the muscle that's attached to the bone. It'll eventually release it. And this also helps with the fascia that's all over your system. It's an interconnected web inside your body. And a lot of people are in restriction. And so what this does, it, well, beats you up a little bit and loosens yeah. stuff up. It also, yeah. if you're going to use it for emotional release, uh, I would highly suggest that you start at the belly up, start in the middle of the muscle and then move towards the where it, 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 it starts to connect with bone or some other muscle or whatever else that would be my suggestion 
but I could tell you I keep this by my desk because you know. Yeah, they say it's constant news. Who I talk to. And you it's keep bloody hard. By your desk, David. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. around everywhere with my massage gun. If I meet somebody stressful, <laughs> you don't have yeah, to yeah, yeah. stress me out about <laughs> the massage gun. <laughs> So I put it, yeah. Go ahead. You know, and it really, really hurts, man. It does. And, and, and picture this, you know, Sam had two of us pinning her down. I mean, at one point, I just had to pin her down while Dale worked on her, but using two guns as well. And if any of you have had one of these guns on a high level, now imagine that day after day after day after day to the venture to the point. Because, I mean, I'll let Sam continue with her story, but I'll just, we'll say this. Sam is incredible because she actually led us through her journey as well which is very unusual. She, she come to the point where she had this big aha moments and awakenings and she was able to say, this happened, this happened, this happened. And then we, it guided us all together as a group into how to get this trauma out of her. And her trauma was a significant, horrific trauma that had mm -hmm. been in her body her whole life. And so I'll let you continue, Sam. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so then after the first experience, after going then with Andre and Laura. And I have to say, having cranial sacral therapy the second time was a total different experience to the first time because quite frankly, I hadn't done the work. So the first time, poor Laura, like, don't get me wrong, everything that Laura brought in with the fire, um, with my ancestors in my stomach and what she did um, was huge. But I didn't feel her hand gestures. Um, in my lower back, like I did the second time, um, I, I that was totally blocked. So I never mm. felt any of that until the second time. Um, and then Aunt Matty and Laura after that had then did um, got rid of all the projections on me. Um, again, what we what you were just talking about, David, this morning, really um, at the beginning about the projections of with women and things like that that you you don't see um so then the second time then i had um a reading with andrew and i always do this with my body like i see like a yes and a no and i see a light aside on one side to the other to ask a question so i was like so do i do the mentorship because i want to now continue with the work after the first experience or do i go back to combined therapy my body instantly was like combined therapy just like my right hand was just like within the second of me asking just move yeah. so I was like okay yeah. the body's talking and then and I thought well why don't I just do both so I signed myself up <laughs> <to the ship. laughs> and I signed myself up again for the two days to go back yeah so Going back then the second time was a totally, di totally, totally different to the first. Um, the first day was very psychedelic. Going when I went under the Lucy, oh, we first of all had the infrared and then the, um, the float. flotation. My body instantly on the flotation on the first day, we're at it, and I'd been doing floats in between since coming back from combined therapy I'd got yes. started doing floats and I just noticed that my body was like all my left hand side just kept kicking out all the time um just again my ignorance trapped trauma and so um I like when I came out I said this I explained what my body had been doing when we were in the float and so they're like, aha. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then we went under the Lucia light and then I, I traveled very far under the Lucia light. And what I have to say as well is, you know, the vulnerability for you to do it, but also the level of respect, because when you, when these guys open their energy field to you, you see them and their energy field just as much as they see yours, uh -huh. you know, so you these, guys, these guys are not just giving you something. They're opening themselves up entirely. So you can see things psychically too. And I could see, I could see, I'm not going to say how, but I could see how Matty works. <laughs> 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 and afterwards he was like, oh, you saw that? And I was like, yeah. I saw that. <laughs> 
<laughs> pieces and parts of my infrastructure and certain ways that I function with the unseen world that no one else has ever been able to peer into other than obviously Andrew. So I was very impressed with that. Yeah. Yeah. So that so that's unique. Dale can be a little bit more close. So he, I think he knows. So like people can <laughs> a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So then basically we went through dream my dreams and just basically my unhealed trauma that I wasn't dealing with. And as I explained, I kind of. I had it. I thought that if you kept going back to certain the event, so so to speak, you were giving power and energy to it, and um, quite frankly, it affected me so for so long. I didn't feel like I didn't feel like that was healing. I felt like healing was forgiveness of myself and my younger self, forgiveness of the abuser, um, uh, forgiveness of all the events that happened thereafter. I didn't un I didn't understand how you heal and well, so Matty and Dale were sat down and were teaching me how to do that oh sorry prior to that I had my cranial sacral therapy with Laura and um yeah that I felt everything and so, Laura puts you Laura puts you back like um in the fetus of the mother womb and it, every every time I think about this it really makes me emotional because she's such a mother, like holding you in a in a certain way, and then you're being rocked like a baby. Like I feel like I've been rebirthed. I feel like I've been reborn. And Laura does that for you, and holds such sacred space for you. She's oh, they're all incredible. So, so um, yeah, that gets me every time because <laughs> I'd, I'd I'd forgotten what that felt like. Yeah, Dale, so, chime in. Sam, there was a there was a point in the the second session where, as soon as I tuned into you, I, I was speaking to the grandmothers and I was talking to them of of what, how we can start like slowly getting out of you. And they just said, "Look her in the face and tell her the work's not done yet. That, mm. that there's going to be something what you're avoiding." And you looked at me with disbelief, but there was like a part of you where you didn't listen to what I was saying, and I was like, "No, it's still there, and you, there's still work what needs to be done." And they were saying, affirm that to her and look at her in the eyes, look at her soul and tell her. And I could see there was like a, no, I've done the work. No, I haven't done the work. But there was a change in you. I could see there was like a an understanding. Then you went on into the evening and you had that experience of that, what you had on the evening. If you want to share that, you don't have to share that experience. Yeah, well, I'm an open book. Go ahead. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't want to play light to everything I experienced with Laura as well, like, um, we weaved a basket <laughs> yeah. and um, yeah and then created this light basket and then all the ancestors were then showing me after I've weaved this basket we're all gonna have some brown liquor together <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah not time yet because Laura was finding more peace in me and we were walking through the pine forest and then we had the whales and then had and then I got all of um this whale song. It was a song um woven in and around me. So then going back, sorry, yeah. Then no. had, then we went then I went back I had some lovely time with these guys and then went back to the hotel room. And because, so, like I said, I like I haven't even touched really how much has happened through every single process because there's so much that happens in a in a nanosecond. So I to journal was really important to me to get it all down. So I was struggling with the journaling, and the programs were kind of coming in because I'd forgotten my toothbrush, and my teeth were like really irritating me. And I was like, should I just go to the shop and just go and get a toothbrush? Anyway, I sat in the car, did a load of journaling. Then, then like it was almost like a timeline um, notch, but it w it wasn't a timeline notch. It was me. Everything was given to me to show me how you change your own reality. It was so, a reality shift. Yeah. So basically, my car no. started kicking out. I didn't tell these guys this because I I was like I there's responsibility to yourself and and your own journey. So these guys don't even know about this section of it. So my car started kicking out loads of blue smoke and black smoke and oil coming out of my car. 
So I was like, oh, right, I'm just going to turn it off. I'm going to go back to my room. I did <laughs> as much journaling as I could. So then I went back to the room. And then it was like this wave. I was in exactly the same room. I was staying in a travel lodge. And it was exactly the same room as where um, the sexual abuse had happened to me. It was the same layout. Mm -hmm. So then all these memories then started flooding in. Then there was this black energy shadow just appeared. And so I was so kept calling me a murderer because of the work that we'd done during the day mm. and murderer, murderer, murderer. And so I was like, you know, you don't bother me anymore. I don't know what you're about, but you, you're actually seen now. I haven't seen you before, you know, go. Then it wouldn't go. Then I said that I was going to do like, send it something not very nice it didn't care so a sentinel being that i'd been through under the lucia light came in and totally changed the whole environment and got rid of it for me so i was able Ooh. to sleep boom and um yeah that was wow. just that was amazing so then I was then laying down in bed going, what am I going to do about my car? Like, I've got to drive three and a half hours back tomorrow as well as driving, like Matrix playing with you. So I was then looking up what garages are in the local area, what time they what time they were opening before I then went to combined therapy. And I was like, no, bollocks to this. I'm changing my reality. I'm not having this. <laughs> so basically... I did a prayer to my ancestors and it, I changed my reality, basically. Yeah. And so then the next day when I woke up, Andrew had told me the previous night if I did loads of ex like stretching, it would help with the gun work the next day. Yeah. So massage gun. Sorry. Massage gun, sorry. Yeah. Massage, massage gun. gun. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Oh, I, I, call it the gun. I always call it the gun. It's far too long to say massage gun. It is. But... <laughs> yeah, but we yeah. are on YouTube. Yeah. And just, so... quick, just quickly on pause, just to quickly answer this question David wanted to ask it while we're on the gun quickly. Uh, we have Jason asking about the gun. Uh, where's the question, guys? There we go. Any advice what, about sorry. the locations? on the body to begin with these guns for MFR releases. Mr. Ellis, are you there? Yes, I am. Yes. Okay. So let me just isolate my um, hearing. Um, so guys, when it comes to uh, the sections of the body that you're going to need to pay attention to, uh, the first thing you're going to need to pay attention to is the way stress works so stress works in the way of blocking your ability to fight it is the first priority that stress has it's the worst kind of disease that there is so it's going to constrict the nerves coming off of your brain basically here trapezius the top of your trapezius and your brain stem is going to harden and tighten the reason why that is is because what happens is a literal biofeedback up into your head. And what happens is a traffic jam starts happening in your head. The brain fog, the tightness that you feel, the number of thoughts that are causing a traffic jam inside your head, they're all attributed to if somebody was holding you behind your head and squeezing. So for those of you who are listening to this broadcast, do a little bit of a self-check, right? Simple self-check, look left. Look right, look up, look down the yes, no test, and tell me why you're feeling the tension, okay? Because I'm going to tell you on one of these sides, they ain't so equal if you're listening to this broadcast right now. <laughs> okay? One of these sides, that's the first thing you want to do. The second thing you want to do is the middle of tra the trapezius. This muscle that's here that's going up to your brainstem, you're only seeing part of it. The rest of it is in the middle of your back. And so it kind of tightens and clutches the, the middle of your back. And what that feels like, for those of you who are listening to this broadcast, um, is that your, your, your heart is constricted. So some of you may not be feeling that. But for those of you who have issues around that area, 
that is going to lock down that area. And I could pretty much, you could test it, do a little self-check with me. You're going to just, not through your mouth, through your nose. See how much expansion you have in your chest area. Is it feeling tight? Does it feel like it, it can expand more, but it just won't? If it feels like you can expand more, but it just won't, the whole of this is about softening. A lot of you walk around very hard. You don't realize it. You're not fluid anymore. You're not like water. Your body's not like water. It's kind of like, um, yeah, it doesn't matter whether you have muscles or whether you don't have muscles. That has nothing to do with it. If you are in balance, everything feels like water. So if you inhaled and you felt a restriction inside here, it's you're going to need some work. You're going to need to work on some stuff. And of course, the lower back, which is the hip area that you guys have a lot of issues with. So from the sexual organs all the way down to issues of support that come around the back and where the fascia ends, because you don't have muscles all the way up and down your back, there's a little floating section in the lumbar region that's here. And if that is tight, your whole world is tight, your whole world. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of a self-check here. So if you're sitting on a chair, you're just going to space your feet out like this and bend forward. You know, that just let the, the, the hips rotate in. Any slight discomfort that you feel inside that rotation that you are making towards the ground to put your hands on the ground uh, will indicate a restriction inside there. So you ask me what are the five main parts. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to get take the massage gun. I'm going to give myself a treatment right now fairly quickly in one minute flat. It's a new healing system, the quickie system. The quickie system. <laughs> this hair. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to put this one here. On the other side, loosen up my brainstem. And I'm going to do a, a stretch on the neck like this while I'm Tilting my head this way, I'm going to drop my shoulder down to expose that trapezius. And I'm going to go to the other side, tip. While I'm depressing the shoulder, I'm tilting the neck. Then I'm going to take the gun, bring it to the middle of my back. That's if I have the flexibility, and I'm assuming that you'll have the flexibility to get this done or just get a bigger massage gun with a longer handle. Okay? Or have somebody else do it. I'm going to take this. That's three so far. I'm going to start on the flexor in the front of my leg because I'm not even getting up to do this because I have work to do. Right? And I'm going to go to the other flexor on the front of my leg and I'm going to go around the sides and on the top of the back and everybody's looking at me like this man has lost his goddamn mind. Yeah, I'm not getting up to do this. Are you bad? <laughs> right? So here you go. And you're massaging your glutes. And I've just done some basic first aid. <laughs> Restoring a flow to my nervous system. And then I'm going to just sit up. I'm going to expand my chest and I'm going to do release. <laughs> and I've just restarted my reset, my nervous system. Does that make sense? Yes. Beautiful, mm. David. Brilliant. Beautiful. So we'll continue on. We've got, I think we've got the last day with Sam. Then we're going to go into Lily's experience. Um, so if you want to continue to that last day um, and what happened in the hotel going to the last day and so on. Yeah, so then the next day I just felt really sad and emotional. I had that, that basically what my ancestors showed me that I hadn't been doing the work. So I got to the house and Matty was greeted me and it was, it was perfect because just the, just like for everything that was going on, explained it all to him and he gave me some great tools and sent me his ancestral um revocation which i've been doing loads and it's so powerful and then matty and laura came and explained to them what had been going on so then um but then straight after that we went to the lucia light and then did the ancestral contract revocation with matty there's a lot of light language from my ancestors that come through with that too. We were all um, 
we were all co-creating as well as Matty's. And then I was in the spiritual court of equity and that was that was amazing seeing everybody like there's a lot of people in the spiritual court of equity <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of beings. It's super powerful. And all that yep. charge, all that polarity, all that good, bad, and ugly doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't nope. exist within me anymore either. It's just in it's just neutral. It's just all in the spiritual court of equity. To find that level of peace is, um, and my ancestors came in when I was driving home today about doing the show today, and they said, if you could just tell people the peace that you've found, mm -hmm. and if every single person finds peace and love, just imagine what this world's going to look like. Uh-huh. One because, person at a time. Yeah, yeah, the level of peace that I feel is incredible. Yes, amen. You can see mm -hmm. it in your face. Thank you. Yes, you can. Yeah. It shows. So there were some more stories because there, you know, there, there, there was some very significant. Um, there was a very significant release that you had with Dale and Laura upstairs yeah. on the map. Yeah. So then I'll breeze through quite quickly. So then I then we went to the flow where I did some more inner work, and then came back, and then we did cranial sacral therapy with Laura and Dale, and um, that was that. I literally felt everything that Laura was doing and holding space for me and Dale. Like, Dale's got these amazing um, antennas and, like, I could feel them all over my body and where they were going and when. So, basically, my, I, my soul, myself, my body, I was just crying. I, I've never cried like it. These Just soul tears, getting it all out. But and it just kept coming and coming and even like Dale said afterwards I kept going at a certain point and then restarting because even I myself because there was no charge or polarity there in getting it all out I was thinking oh, I must be done now <laughs> then he just yeah. kept coming <laughs> so from, from my experience of doing it and I was on the phone to David, Andrew and Laurie last night and I, I talked about it briefly but I was quite tired when I talked about it and um, for, for me, so as, as I do soul surgery and psychic surgery, there's a reading energy about each session where it's like an orchestra, where I know how to go, where to go to the next part, next part. And I'm just reading where to go next and the next part, the next part. And all for me was her, it was starting on the feet and a buildup of energy from the feet to the glutes, feet to the glutes. And I was like, as I was going back, I was like, do I have to do it again? Then, he, then finally, as Laura was doing the cranial work and she the pulse was that the expansion contraction was going on there and but it was hilarious because as soon as I started going up she let off a tiny little bit of a noise and I went and, and they were like go back again the next time <laughs> it was a bit of a bigger noise then I kept going back and on the fourth time I got up to the uh the the feminine part and all of a sudden the whale came out the, the whale of the trauma finally started releasing and it was beautiful to see that then as Laura was doing the work on the head and, and the um, the cranio, all the area there and the neck and the octopus and so on, it, it was, I was like, right, you have to go up and start releasing it because Laura's starting to release something and you need to open the, the kind of like plug. It was like a plug energy where I had to go up and open this plug and just put a bit of energy in extra. And all of a sudden she sat up and she started being sick, but it wasn't sick. It was purging sickness. Where the, all of this, yeah, the mucus came out, and I went in with my hands and went right down her throat, and I was pulling this stuff out of, of her, and I just looked at Laura after, and I was like, "What the fuck are we doing here?" <laughs> That's <laughs> because, yeah, with the, the CFT, it opened up the uh, avenue of expression. Yes, yes, yeah. So, and, and um, for me, Laura, just a quick one before I finish, it was your the crate your cranio combined with the soul surgery has blown my mind sister like yes. the, co the combination yeah, of the amazing the cranio and soul surgery working together i've never experienced anything like it like yes. it can, i can reach different layers from what you're doing to what i'm doing mm. and that was one of the most the great experiences of that week was how skillful you are as a practitioner and what you're oh, doing and, you. and the avenues you're going through and to be able to work alongside you and have something like that, which we both helped her get into that space. We both yeah. did our magic. My hat goes off and 
Yeah, it was an, an amazing experience, Laura. Thank, thank you for that. <laughs> well, thank you, Dale. That was, and thank you, Sam, because you had the and courage to step up and do it. <laughs> you had the courage to step up and do it. Yes. You did. And look now, look at the results. And it was an absolute co-creation with all of us and the AI. <laughs> trillions of other beings as well <laughs> and the room, packed, right? yeah. the, the room, room was packed, packed. Yeah, yeah by the time we finished with Richard it was overflowing <laughs> <laughs> thank wow. you Sam thank you Sam yeah you. it was huge yeah and um, so thank we're going to go to Lily now hello Lily the t- oh, talking you. stick is given to you my sister oh thank oh, you very yes. much uh, I just want to say thank you so much for sharing all that. It was like, really emotional to hear your experience. And yeah, wow. Thank you. Um, so my experience was like a couple of months ago now. So I had to like go back into my journals and read. And I also was reflecting on all like the integration time I had as well afterwards. Um, but I guess like where, where it started for me was um, the container of the combined therapy. It felt like it expanded out of that room and the night before I dreamt of Matty and Laura and so I felt like the experience started before I entered the room and um in the float tank itself I could feel I could feel it entering the float tank like what was to come and um yeah I started getting sensations in my body and visions as well of what was to come like in the room together and so the float tank itself, like I've had a few floats and I guess for that one, I actually, I got very relaxed and very energized from it as well. So there's like a lot of energy running through my body, getting ready to like lay on the, on the mat with you guys. And um, when I entered um, and you were both there, I remember lying down and I think the releasing process started almost immediately before it had all even started. I think like Matty placed one magnet on like my solar plexus and I started having really <laughs> and I was like, oh shit. Like <laughs> you didn't oh, stop. <laughs> um, and I remember as because I've never experienced Alicia light having the light turned on. I remember just hysterically laughing when the light turned on, just being like, What am I seeing? What even is this? I had no reference point. Um for what it was just it's so unique in and of itself so I had this there was this ecstatic feeling of like okay this I'm completely surrendered that I was completely surrendered instantly um there was not I I could I didn't have a choice I was just like I'm here just just do just do what you will basically (laughs) um it was was just like just um because it was all just so it was like wow I'm you know so so open to what was coming um and I think the beautiful thing that I experienced I think it was because it was I just had Matty and Laura holding the space for me and and you as a duo are so um harmonious in the sense that you hold this beautiful masculine and feminine polarity in such strength and so having that in the room just it brings this really unique experience of um just feeling really really held but also able to go really really like deep and powerfully like head on into the healing um and yeah it it was absolutely exceptional experience and there were moments the height of it for me were the moments where I guess when Matty and Laura are working together it's like an orchestra and I could feel the orchestra of their energies moving through me and I could feel the energy moving up and down my body and then and then the light that I was seeing, the geometric patterns would synchronize in my vision. So there'd just be this beautiful wave of ge- geometry and the energy and the releasing. And all you can do is surrender to that. There's nothing you can do. And it was interesting because it was much more physical than I thought it was going to be. And um, usually I'm very, very visionary when I have healings and I had no internal vision. It was just the physical <laughs> experience, just the experience of the geometry. And, um, and I, you know, it was huge. And I think afterwards I said that was akin to any sort of plant medicine experience or like the end of, it was like instantly 
as strong as any of the deepest healing experiences I've had in my life. And it was just like sudden. There was, uh, so afterwards, Lily, there was we were around the fire and um, me, Andrew, Laura, Matty, and you were around the fire and Toby and your children. And just the look of your face when you came and you were like, holy fuck. It was Would I put the box on your shoulder? Yes. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, welcome to the show, Andrew. How are we doing? Yeah, hey, good. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Thank you, brother. Nice to see you. You know, it's interesting. You were saying it's as powerful as any plant medicine, and from very early on, I had also nicknamed the system the No Drug Mystical mm. Experience. And every person that's gone through has agreed in their own way. Yes. It's a no drug mystical experience, meaning you're activating your own internal body chemistries to reach that energy that we naturally produce DMT. We naturally produce cannabinoids in our body. It's already natural. And when we have the moment where we have high levels of DMT, we're in that dreamy state. And all the science proves it. We, we produce DMT in large volumes when we're having our uniquely mystical experiences. It was interesting as well, Andrew. Um, I spoke to Bob today, and Bob came on the combine not long ago. And it was so, as they're not competing in any way, but he was like, that day experience I went through was, I enjoyed it more than ayahuasca. It, it had <laughs> such a better experience under the light without any drugs. And there's no competition there, but he was saying it changed my life more than the ayahuasca did. And to have that validation, and obviously they're both totally different things, was just like, wow, this is just, yeah, it's inspirational. And continuing we had, on. We had, that one, we had that one lady, didn't we, that said, and she she was, you know, it was a, a, a somebody from Laura's um, you know, acquaintances that said, and she'd never had any spiritual practice at all, had no really spiritual background, but she said, once she'd finished, the experience was akin to giving birth to her children or marrying her husband. And this is yeah, someone who had my no daughter, no. Yeah. And, yes. and that's how she felt yeah. about it. I was just blown over by that. And the other thing about Sam and Lily and, and like I are doing a medicine journey is you surrendered to it and you do the work beforehand and both of you had done that and both of you surrendered on the table and you actually co-created, both of you which gave you really tremendous experience because um, you had your experience on the table was uh, not the same as Sam's obviously because it was different sort of stuff you were releasing Lily but right from the beginning you were affected you were joining in as well you weren't just saying nothing and you know and cut off you were totally involved in the whole whole creation of it which was beautiful which gave you such a great experience yeah I think when I went in I had I was nervous because I didn't know what to expect and I knew it was going to be big but when I was in the float tank I just in my mind I knew that in order to get the most out of it I had to just say I trust you completely I surrender and I receive all that's the it. healing that's available to, like available to me in the moment so that's what I kept saying in my mind, like because I knew my body would open more and release more if I just kept saying I trust you. And like Laura, you make that very, very easy because oh. you have just this such beautiful mothering. And I felt cradled, like as you said before. And um when you you sung through the whole of it and oh, yes. your voice yeah. kind of your voice kind of multiplied. So it sounded like <laughs> there were hundreds of ancestors in the room. At, at points, <laughs> hundreds of grandmothers all around. Yeah, it's like this extension. It's very, very, very beautiful, and and I really appreciate you being there because um, having that feminine cradling was so healing to me, and 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 feeling that holding from you is very beautiful, and I will always have that. So thank you. Oh, thank so, you, Lily. I want to add another, another, I want to add another layer here. Yeah. So the experience that you went through, the experience that Sam went through. Imagine if we had an EEG, an EKG, and an ECG hooked up to you. Skin resistance, blood pressure, body temperature, brainwave function, all measuring the unique experiences. Now, David and I, when we were in Barbados four plus years ago, came up with this next process where we're going to include that in the system. But just imagine having that validating data if you're going through a purge or going through experience and there's measurable experience, a measurable thing in the EEG or EKG or ECG that's showing you going through the somatic release. Mm -hmm. David, 
expand on what the ECG and the EKG and the EEG could do for people who are more towards the science and not towards the woo-woo or in the woo-woo and how that could help grow the next phase of healing. When we decided to create this system, we didn't want a system that is hit or miss. Hit or miss is like, it works for some people, it doesn't work for some people, right? Some people have some experiences, some, no, 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 no. We don't, we, we don't want to afford uh, Nessie um, as the luxury of that. So what we built into the system from the very beginning was measurable results that can be replicated over and over again or turned up or turned down as the case may be. So for those of you who don't know, an EEG is an electroencephalogram. It measures what your mind and your brain is doing in any one situation. So for those of you who are spiritual and who meditate or do whatever, what happens is that the machine reads what your, what's going on inside of you while it is that you are <laughs> um, getting a treatment. An electrocardiogram is basically um, measuring the um, cardiopulmonary um, reactions, the um, oxygen levels of your skin, uh, these kinds of things, your pulse and so on, so that we could see what's going on inside the body when the treatment is going on, and we could see what's going on inside your head when the treatment is going on, which means for those of you who don't know, when you are awake and listening to this broadcast, you have all sorts of little spike, random spikes. You're thinking about your grocery list. You're thinking about lunch for those of us who haven't had lunch or well, breakfast for that matter. Not that I'm mentioning any names, right? Right. <laughs> You're thinking about all of these things at the same time. And so your, your brainwave pattern is spiking. But if you were to go into a meditative trance, well, if you were to sublimate, so to speak, then there's a regularity that in the electrical pattern of what's going through your head. And that is where the body does repair. It does repair then. It doesn't do repair while you're thinking about all these things, right? And so for a lot of people, what we're trying to do for those of us who are already meditators, we're trying to drop you somewhere around 16% below sleep. Because sleep is when your body rep repairs itself. We want to increase the healing manifold. And it also repairs your mind. That's what dreams do. Dreams are your mind repairing itself and resetting itself. It's trying to, your body's continuously trying to throw off shit. Your mind is continuously trying to throw off shit. But there's so much of it that it needs help. Really, it does. Because we're not living back in the Middle Ages well, you could just go outside, you know, pick a carrot, munch on the carrot. Life is simple. Nobody's bothering you in the middle of nowhere. You live in a place where um, there's a lot of psychic attacks on a daily basis that you're trying to ward off. People are giving you dirty looks. People are giving you all sorts of um, weird micro shit coming at you. And at the end of the day, your body's tired and it continuously tries to throw shit off. So what we're doing with the system is removing the shit. Now, not over a period of time, eight hours of sleep. Now, like right now. And we're trying to remove like the, 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 the because it's a backup system. Imagine that your body and your mind is a septic tank and it's backed up for weeks. <laughs> so what the system is trying to do is try to get the bulk out of it so that you get closer to a clean septic tank, okay? And that's basically what it is. So what the EEG and the ECG is going to be able to do for us is build that bridge that we talked about four years ago on a show in Boulder, Colorado, between the woo-woo people and the hardcore scientific people. Enough of this nonsense where they're on one side and you're on one side, right? Because the truth of the matter is, if the scientific people wanted to know what spirit was about, they would literally make the effort. If the woo-woo people wanted to know what the whole scientific thing was about, they'd make the effort. Well, don't worry. We, we have you covered. We're going to be doing it. Well, it's, it's great to do that, David, because like 
someone who did obviously Wim Hof's done that hasn't he with his techniques and all of the oxygen he's actually brought the science and the spirituality together and that's created a huge market within the world because everyone is like holy shit there's science to back this up and there's we need the bridge we need that bridge I remember talking to you David about that bridge and that data is the bridge that data data. is going to be the most valuable things we have two people on the show who've been through the system Right, boy, I want to put a, a, an EEG on your head. Sorry, that sounds so forward. I'm sorry. I'd like, I would have loved to have disconnected you to an EEG to let people see that it's not just nonsense, it's, right. it works. Imagine if that whole journey of, uh, of Samuel healing that you went through at this moment on the clock is right when you were going through the purge that you were going through or the, the how, how whatever set in for you, you could watch the actual brain waves restructure your brain from trauma to normal. Oh, by the way, traumatized people have a certain brainwave pattern. They do. Yes, from trauma to normal. Instant fix. That's what we're talking about, David. That instant fix. Now, we do have a biofeedback system on the PEMF, Matt, yep. right? But that's not enough data. We need to see what's actually going on inside the individual as they go from therapy to therapy. And that's I'm going to go back so you can hook me up next time. <laughs> I will be there in January. I will. <laughs> She'll be there. We all hooked up through wires. <laughs> actually, there's very little, the, headset, the headset is wireless. Okay. It just literally oh, just yeah, wow. your head like this. It's wireless, so it, it's it's like wearing a baseball cap. Okay, and the and the rest is ones on your finger, and the rest are just two 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 paddles on your heart. That's it. Oh, so it's not invasive at all. It's not invasive at all. Yeah, and it's um the information that it's going to give you is going to tell you a lot about where you are. Um, for the um spiritual people who are doing the work. I'm going to say this, and this is going to sound funny. If you want to find out for sure if you're doing the work, go buy yourself an EEG, okay? <laughs> right? Go buy yourself an EEG. I'm doing the work. It's having an effect, right? No. Right? Go buy yourself an EEG. Get yourself some daily readings, right? And I'll tell you where you are. It will tell you where you are. As this is not this is not about talking anymore. This is about actually doing the work and seeing the results. So it will actually tell you. But we are going to add that to the system. That's definitely what we're going to do because there's no point in bringing people to the system if we can't say this is hard data that this has actually happened. This has transpired with them, and that's one of the best things. And we're also going to introduce the concept of aftercare. Remember this. Because that feeling that you guys have, that you're talking about, we want that to be a permanent lock-in. <laughs> right? We want that. We, we want those effects to be locked in permanently. That, and that we have aftercare, a plan for that. That aftercare is so vital. So, so Sam, after you finished your first, your first time going through the system, you had a different reaction than the second time you went through. And if yeah. you had some follow-up advice and care, you would have processed it differently too. And the same yeah. with your first one. And same with you, Lily, too. If you had something that kept you on a unique track of, of, of keeping the healing that you're going through, not just in check, but allowing it to expand as you're further and further from the actual date in which you went through the healing. Mm-hmm. I think for me, it was knowing how you heal. Mm-hmm. I um I I hadn't got like I said it, there was so much polarity there mm-hmm. the good the bad and the ugly I didn't realize like go in the spiritual court of equity and and zero minus infinity and and there's no charge no nothing to it like now I've gone back to myself every single day and I'm a totally different and if she's a totally different person already. Mm-hmm. And I went to my future, like you told me, Andrew. That was interesting too. <laughs> what did you see in your future? Um, she was in the pine woods. She'd already created a sacred fire, and she knew we were coming. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> and she'd made us healing soup for doing the work. So she's where she is now. 
Yeah, she had the tea and biscuits ready for you. <laughs> yeah, and and connect all the multi-dimensional cells so they'd all put ingredients in the soup. Ah, oh, wonderful. <laughs> and yeah. we're probably going to go to that air deck to show people what I'm talking about. Oh, wonderful. This would be a great, great, great time to show yeah. that. Uh, so, Lily, I want to real quick while you're preparing that. Lily, you went through a really, really powerful healing with Dale and myself when we welded your spinal column. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. And then afterwards, you found yourself in a white forest, and then <laughs> you were skiing in a white mountain, and all those little synchronicities that happened afterwards. Can you share with people how the mystical came to your own reality, and you're like, I was in a white forest, and now I'm skiing in this white place, and how that affected you too? Yeah, it was pretty funny because um, in the healing we did together, I had like a really strong vision of um, going into my um, dream world for the first time and my like unique dream space. And and it was beautiful and my children were there and there was the fire that we were tending. And I remember saying, it's beautiful, it's snowy, like it's it's there's snow everywhere and it's just falling and it's so clean and gorgeous. And then, and then like maybe... I can't remember. Maybe and then after the healing happened, I said, um, "Oh, you know, we're going actually to the French Alps tomorrow for the first time with the kids." And you were like, "Have you not made this connection?" <laughs> <laughs> and so I had my whole integration process away from my home, which was really interesting. And I was in somewhere I'd, I'd never been before, which was really good actually. And I was doing something really adventurous with my family for the first time up in a high altitude, which was really cleansing. And I got to just spend a lot of time in this exact space that I'd seen in the vision. And so I had that experience that was part of the integration process for me. And I, I could take that high altitude energy and then come back to my home space, a different person. So it's actually really useful to integrate in a different place. And really funny, the synchronicity. And it's funny when you don't make the connection yeah. and someone else says it's Andrew, it's really Andrew, <laughs> Andrew came with the yeah. grandmaster of the obvious again. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, here's your hat. Put this on. Yeah, like, there it is. Oh. <laughs> 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 All right, David, so, you want to you show him this? I'm sure you could just um, expand it on... All right, so guys, this is um, what light is. I'm just going to use my little mouse thing. I'm, a, I'm in edit mode on this air deck. So wide spectrum balanced light, it decreases oxidative stress. Uh, it has a relaxing and centering effect on the body. Uh, it, regular, it regulates some circadian rhythm. That is when you fall asleep and when you wake up. Uh, it improves gene function for those of us whose genetics have decided to not cooperate. That's what it does, and it increases motivation. And of course, blue light, which a lot of us are subject to, does exactly the opposite. But this is what I'm talking about here. This is your brain right now. See those little peaks here? That's um, That here would be the grocery list. That here would be picking up the kids. This would be something along the lines of uh, what what show should I watch? Can I, I can't find anything on Netflix. Probably the whole thing here is that I can't find anything on Netflix. This is your brain under the Lucia light. Uniformed. This is what we're hoping. So this is an EEG diagram that will show you what's going on in the mind of the individual and so on as they go through different um, uh, different phases of sublimation, okay? Um, of course, we use infrared, and we're going to probably add uh, ultrasound as well to the system. That is the next movement that we are making, but I'll let Andrew tell you about that. This air deck was um, put together by myself, and if you scanned the barcode at the beginning of this broadcast, you will have access to it if you can stand to hear my voice for 20 minutes or 10 minutes, I can't remember. And of course, this was our um, first little clinic, our first little lab, right? <laughs> With the mat and so on. And uh, this was our little lab that we set up. This was, the, this was our first infrared sauna and the first um, flotation tank that we ran through and 
just taking you through uh, you guys through. i am clicking the wrong screen okay all right and these are the magnets that we're talking about these magnets were put on this guy who is a politician yeah we figured that he needed grounding we figured <laughs> that he needed grounding right <laughs> all right so he's a politician and uh yeah we did a lot of um stuff this is the aftercare that we're talking about uh which is going to allow you to be able to learn about different therapies and so on and how to regulate yourself so guys if you have the time go check out the air deck this is one of my best photos really i love this stuff right so go check out the air deck and let us know what you think this is the um lucia light right i believe that um richard has a uh, lucia light as well so go check out the air deck and let us know what you think okay have we heard from Where richard you all guys? had you get able to get access to that um uh, i'm not sure if he's here now i think he's having a bit of trouble getting on guys he keeps right. coming in now. something's going on with his audio or he can't connect uh mm. but yeah so those peaks does regularization regularized peaks that you're looking at is somebody who is engaging in some sort of spiritual um practice that does regularize peaks because when you are in focus when you are in focus that's what your brain does and when i say focus i mean whether you're doing um reiki whether you're doing stuff if you're doing it really at its optimal that's what your brain does it regularizes itself which theoretically is how your brain should always be but due to the fact that there's such a thing called stress you know people might cut you off in traffic the price of living is going up <laughs> these are the things that keep your brain in flux so earlier, David, you're talking about ultrasound therapy. Mm -hmm. By the way, ultrasound therapy, just like you would use ultrasound to see the baby inside a womb, ultrasound waves can penetrate similar to infrared, but they penetrate far deeper and they can deconstruct scar tissue, mm -hmm. erase scar tissue, penetrate the muscles at the most deepest levels and get the deepest releases out of the muscles, which will include some somatic releases and emotional releases. And I'm out, and now the way ultrasound works, it's a it's a gel that they put on there. They have a little wand that um, goes to the various hertz, and then you go on the different parts of the body. Now, what we're going to do is incorporate an entire treatment from the top of your neck to the bottom of your ankles and to the sides of your hips, where all the pressure points are, so mm -hmm. that everything, all scar tissue that you could have, will be fully deconstructed. Then you're going to go to an infrared chamber. Then you're going to go into a sauna a flotation tank. So you're going to have three forms of scar tissue body reduction. So that means no matter how, how bad you could be the hump deck of Notre Dame, we're going to remove that hump. All that scar energy from abuse, etc., can go away and stop blocking you from the healing. Okay. Not yes, everyone can handle heavy touch or massage guns. And that's why we want to include the ultrasound therapy. I want you guys to know that when we're talking on this broadcast, we're not talking off the top of our heads. We use our bodies as the lab. I damage myself regularly on purpose because I just want to see where it comes from, uh, uh, how I could bounce back a lot of the times. And I'm going to tell you, ultrasound does work to heal quickly. So what I my typical day would be, I'm going to wake up in the morning. I'm going. That's, that sounded bad. I damaged myself regularly. I go to the gym. Okay. Right. And then I come back and I'm hurting. I, uh, according, I keep telling Andrew, I commit ass homicide. I come back home, get out, get, pull out the gun. Right. Or if it's really, really bad, I'm going to pull out the ultrasound and, you know, soften those tissues up. And then I'm going to run the rejuvenation cycle on the mat. And I'm going to reset my mind with the Lucia light, right? So when you see me, and I can actually speak right now, that wasn't me a few hours ago, okay? It was me crawling on top of a table slowly, okay? So the thing about it is that we use the stuff on ourselves, and we figured that that would be the best way 
to figure out what the weaknesses in the systems are, if they are, and what we need to add and what we don't need to add. Okay. And we're going to be making the experience more pleasant as we go along. But definitely, this is something that um, I I'm so excited about this stuff. May right. I have a good question to that as well. Go sorry. Ahead. So, for someone, um, my sister has had many vowels changed with her, um, her heart. So, mm -hmm. she's been told that because of the scar tissue, she's oh, she'd only be able to have one more donor valve would that help with that andrew would the scar tissue build up like that oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you want to answer that question andrew you want me to answer that question I, I couldn't good? hear it I, I couldn't hear it my 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 screen went blank for a section my connection would be bad what was it Okay. So my my sister, um, she's got um, all all array stuff with her heart, but she's had a number of um, valves changed, and they've now told her that she's on her last one because of the scar tissue. So would that help with that? She's had bowel surgery. Valves. She's had val the mitral like valve. valve it changed, it, it changed the mitral valve in her in her heart, and okay. um, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The valves. Yeah. Um, it can help. It won't do everything that she wants because there's so much else that has to be addressed before you would get to that. Yeah. Okay. I mean, when there's heart damage like that, there's emotional heart damage that has to be dealt with too. The trauma release from the pericardium is so vital. Well, That's where the I ultrasound therapy would be. Yeah, go ahead, David. Can I make a suggestion? So mm -hmm. what you're describing is what the people talk about when they say circling the drain. That, um, that, uh, that hardening in the area. Whenever I talk about this system, I keep talking about, and you, I, I repeated it about four or five times in the show so far, this hardening people do. Okay? This hardening, your every you're supposed to be free that came out so corny i'm going to try to make that sound better like <laughs> not want to be around me right now right my work is david is it no, the natural state is to be free 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 <laughs> and that's not just a statement of inside your limbs um i believe judy nemeth is actually on the chat right now but i wanted to let even internally you're supposed to be free free your digestive system, everything is supposed to be free and unencumbered. What happens with regard to people is that the mind can literally destroy you and harden you up, every part of you, every tissue, every muscle, sinew, fiber in your body. What um, is happening to your sister can, these are the things that are going to help. She is going to have to soften the diet, literally, that she is eating. Okay, start with that. She is going to have to learn to breathe properly. And when I say breathe, I just gave you an exercise earlier on. If your sister did that, she would feel the restriction. Does that make sense? Yeah, because that makes sense. Your, your, your respiratory system is linked to your cardi uh, cardiac system, which is the cardiopulmonary system that we call it, okay? Heart and lungs. Yeah. So she might need to actually learn breathing exercises and she needs to soften. Mm -hmm. Because circling the drain means... I worry about it, it gets worse. Yeah. It gets worse and I worry about it. Yeah. Right? But I'm trying to, to, to imagine like you are being held, held, held inside and outside. Mm -hmm. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Let it in, let it out, relax. Eat yeah. freely, um, eat some leaves, green, green leaves, and so on, and keep your digestive system unencumbered because there's a number of things that affect what you're talking about. Your sister get, has to get more freedom in the chest, if I'm not mistaken, and I, you know, I'm just going to use my intuitiveness here. Um, your sister is 
closing down herself. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. So she needs to open back up. Also, with any work you're going to do, the tailbone and the back of the neck will be the places that you're going to start with so she can build new foundations. The damage to the back of her neck from the emotional loss and the damage to her heart is reflected in the tailbone and the tailbone reflected in the neck. Correct. And they're going to have to do reconnective energetic surgery so the neck and the tailbone can communicate through the spinal column. Then the back part of the heart is going to create, let's just say, a dense, solid chunk that we would eventually turn, it will eventually turn into a psychic cyst. And or she can get herself an, an SE practitioner or massage therapy and tell the massage therapy the following words. My sister's mediastinum is, is hardening. Can you fix it? Exactly. Tell her that. Or she can just come to combine therapy. That too. Oh, yeah, that is too. Yeah. <laughs> there is that as well. Right. But of, for honestly, right now, your sister needs to do a huge reset in her life. Okay. Right. Yeah. And I always I, I always say when you when you're circling the drain, the way out of it is to let it uh, uh, flow with the tide and then flow out of it. OK, it's like a whirlpool effect. The way you escape it is to go with it and let the um, energy pull you out of it. But right yeah. now, with regard to your sister, um, that situation with regard to the constant replacement of valves, she just needs to not worry about it that's the first thing okay yeah. mm -hmm. like lily how's your neck uh really bad <laughs> mm. how bad is it on a scale of one to ten um a ten is like extreme unmanageable yes. pain uh probably like three or four maybe but it's just my shoulders and neck have been bad for a long time because of children and mm -hmm. just hauling them around. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> what else is going on with you? Um, and also the base of my back as well. Ah, has, there we go. Has been ah, there we go. So I suspect yeah. you, yeah, yeah. Can I, can you Tell them about Tell me about some of the rolfing sessions that you went through. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. when I first started working with um, uh, Dale and um, he advised that I should go for, like, weekly rolfing for a period, I think it was 10 weeks. Oh, my goodness. I told, was... I told you that. I told you that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, um, I mean, incredible incredible pain like for just a lady like just pressing with her finger on like certain points but the release you get from rolfing is so incredible so so incredible um and yes it really really works and remember I, I what they did to your <laughs> remember what they did to your jaw oh my goodness yeah the face work with rolfing i mean they they massage like the inside of your mouth um up in your nose like high up in your in your nasal passages um it's unbelievable like I could um she told me after she worked on my nose that I had my voice was an octave lower than when I came in yep um yeah it's it's a remarkable um it's a remarkable thing to do and yeah it works so well and I've been telling everyone about it because I'd never even heard about it I didn't even know it was a thing so yep. Okay. And all this, so, and all this time, you were, you were dealing with, you know, your your parent, your your issue with your mother, okay, and the journey that you went through with that too, all of that, all of that's related, okay. And what's going on with your neck now? Um, I think it's just from it, it's less my neck; it's more just you know where you released my shoulder um, uh, when I was with you. Um, it's just it just winds back up again. I think it's from sleeping and breastfeeding and, and holding my children also yeah. it's it, in from chinese acupuncture it's your governor vessel your governing vessel your governing vessel has stagnation in it and yes it is from being a mom with a two-year-old and a five-year-old but 
It also represents the spiritual journey that you've gone through, the fast parts, the slow parts, and the energies that you're able to process when you're not being a mother and you're trying to be a spiritual person on the healing journey and discover how those skills and talents are going to affect the future you. That's why that particular spot is being bound up in you right now, because mm-hmm. it's a reminder that there's, there's many yous in the journey here. Okay? Because you can put the kids down and, you know, Toby can take care of them for X amount of time so you can go and do your spiritual work. You like doing your, 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 um, your work with all the different uh, fabrics and working with all the different, um, you know, stuff that you want to do and, you know, and create with. Mm-hmm. And then the balancing of that. And then there's, you know, well, I'm just going to cook today and just be a mom. Mm-hmm. Each of those are bound up in your governor vessel. And when you begin to release the governor vessel on a very regular basis, you have a lot more raw fuel to burn that's a higher miles per gallon than the fuel you're using. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. David, what can you let people know about the governing vessel? You're muted. Okay, so like it, the name suggests, it's the governing vessel. Uh, so what it does, it mm, mm, for most people, it creates a domino effect. If something is wrong, it begins to domino, okay? And so in Chinese um, medicine, and I wish Sean Bibi were here, he could confirm this, right? You work on the governing vessel because it's going to be one of the major access points between what's going on upstairs and what is being referred down. Does that make sense to you? Yep. Okay. So as an example, I've been watching your neck since the start of this broadcast. Sorry. Um, like I, I do that stuff. I, I I have a problem with that. Right. Me, so, me too. I have the same problem. I can't help it. <laughs> right. So Lily, my suggestion to you, you need to stretch that side of your neck and you might need to depress depress the shoulder and slowly stretch the neck in the opposite direction right because you want to create a little bit of um, freedom in the neck and the lower back so i'm going to guess um that you're going to experience pain when you lean forward and you take your finger on this tip here it's going to refer pain down your lower back yeah yeah, so you're going to need some heat. You're probably going to mm-hmm. need a little bit of work, right? You're going to need you're going to need a little bit of work and you shall be fine cuz what you've done is just functional. You can reverse it. Yep. But you have a lot of stuff going on in your head that you also need to dump. So cool. leave the chair <laughs> like one. You you have a lot of stuff going on in your head that you also need to dump. You're just making yep. your head heavy. Mhm. Exactly. You just got to lift up the dump truck of the skull. So the, the, the skull lifts up and just dump it out. And yeah. it, shows you in, it shows you how important body work is, just as important mm. as, as meditation and the spiritual journey. You've got to do body work. You've got to have it all balanced. And for you, Lily, having that on a regular process is really going to evolve you on going to see someone regularly after after yeah. maybe like three weeks off, then start it again. And it's the same for me. I build up pressure tension so easily like if i leave my legs for 10 days and i go back to them i'm like holy fuck it's literally (laughs) like concrete again so there is that awareness there where we have to continue this work as a process not just seeing the combined therapies one stop it's continuing on after doing the great work after and that's the important insight of the healing journey and there are paces when you go down that journey as well, the body journey, I mean, it complements it beautifully, doesn't it? Even synchronistically, there are times when you'll be going through something on a, on, you know, on an emotional level and, and then the body healing, something will happen, click something. And you're like, whoa, that was huge. And you just know, I had one in the well, car well, with I, and, and, I, and, and, and Laura. So go ahead, Dale. Yes, uh, there was a funny time. So Andrew got me with a gun and he got to my abducts and he looked at me and goes, don't kick so, me. So wrong, uh, whatever you say. <laughs> uh, Andrew got, got me with a gun. <laughs> so so, so wh- when I experience high pain, I don't make a noise. I go weird and I start like like flopping around. <laughs> so I started doing that. 
and he got my pet he got my pecs then the next day they were literally i couldn't move my arms and i was like i've never had someone the next day they killed and he got the gun straight away and went into them again and like they actually released and i was like i could actually start feeling my body and how it's meant to actually feel and from doing the combine therapy that massage gun process i went and bought my own and i started doing it regularly on myself and my body's starting to get used to how it's meant to feel before I was dealing with stress. I was dealing with tension. My body was so used to just holding it. And it took a long time for that to be able to come out and actually feel how legs are meant to feel, how your arms are meant to feel. Exactly. It's a, it's and there are also spiritual traumas that we hold in our body that need to be released that way as well, right? So there's some traumas we can heal through the work, other traumas that need the body needs that, that co-creation in it. Yes. And the reason I say don't punch me is because I've been punched. <laughs> I've been kicked. I've been punched. I've been head I got kicked off Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, honestly, the, the the nervous system of a lot of people are is in havoc on a normal daily basis. Yep. For, if you guys are listening to this broadcast or whatever, take my advice. Do self-check. Be mindful of what's going on inside be mindful of how you feel something hurts deal with it yes. don't just go about it right oh something hurts you have a traffic jam in your head stop what you're doing exactly. stop sit down process it all right don't walk around with a traffic jam in your head that's how you get into accidents that's how you bump into people at walmart one of my worst places on earth to visit you know the mindlessness of people is on full display hitting you with the shopping carts a bit yeah never mind let's not get into that that's a personal something but anyway as i was saying get it if you have a traffic jam in your head no matter where you are stop stop immediately why is there a traffic jam here what can i do to relieve it don't walk around with pain. Don't walk around with yeah. a traffic jam. And if you're feeling the malaise, which is a spiritual construct, let me describe what a malaise is feeling. What a malaise is, because some of most of you all have experienced it, but you don't have a name for it. We're calling it the malaise. The malaise is that feeling that something just isn't right. I just feel put upon. I just feel like it's kind of like overwhelmed, mixed with scatteredness. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? You'll have felt it before. That is the malaise. That is coming from the spiritual self. That is coming from your soul. And that tells you, you need to stop. Lie down wherever you are. I don't care whether you're in church. Okay? Lie down wherever you are and get a handle on what everything is trying to tell you. Because it will tell you. Your body will report it to you immediately. But if you're not listening, your body will stop reporting. You know, you have pain, you're just going about it. Your body's going to stop reporting and it's going to become your new normal. So you have a whole bunch of people walking around like a rusted screw with a vice grip attached to it. Okay? That's what it is. You need to put some WD-40 on it. You know, have to love up that screw, take it out, you know, that kind of thing, right? Let it breathe. And a lot of you are not doing that. And Andrew, I wish we could just put the, like at least people through that system because a lot of people have trauma on board. They don't even, they just take it as a new normal. Yeah. Can I ask you guys a question? Living, they end up living in pain for an entire lifetime. Yeah. Yes. I want to ask you guys a question. What, what was it like when you were first doing these back in Barbados and you realized all of a sudden, holy shit, look what we're actually onto here. What were some of the, were there any markers, any, any particular patients that just. Yeah. Oh, I started it. it I actually started in 2016 while I was in Seattle, actually. Oh, right. That's okay. where I did the first group of it. And then when I got to Barbados is when I met David. So I must have been in Barbados about a year, a little less than a year. Then I met David and then we started combining them. Like, because they saw, he came over like, what are you guys doing? No, 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 no. 15 years ago, we were talking about this stuff. And then he actually saw it in action. And then we, we put our brains together and say, this is the next level. What are we missing? What are the angles that we're not paying attention to here? So when I first started it, I absolutely knew it because I developed it for because so many people came to us sessions 
recovering from cancer, recovering from AIDS, heartbreaking destruction, whatever. And I needed a system to get people who were living in permanent pain out of permanent pain. So that was what I originally developed for. Then I realized people who were having these these pains removed had mystical experiences. And then I started doing on people who weren't sick at all, just average Joe everybody, and realizing, oh, my God, the level that I that I have here, I have to refine it. I have to start training other people on it. Just like I told you, you as a healer working in this system, you will accelerate so fast. I mean, look at the journey the three of you have gone through because oh you have people in the exact right perfect state for the healing to take effect. And the rest is your personal technique. But what did we discover? Oh, my God, so many things. Yeah. I mean, we David and I would have these brainstorm moments that would go on for hours and hours and hours. Yeah. Yes, and at me, at the beginning, I was just in it for the psychodotic experience. I keep telling you guys that. All right. Oh, like like I, I get to do mind ash be a mind astronaut. I yeah, I'm in, sign me up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. So but then I realized that there are other levels to this. People live in unawareness. They live in unawareness. And I think bringing people to themselves. I, I've been a yoga teacher in my life. Okay. I've seen people have breakthroughs with themselves. 12 years after starting yoga. I want to minimize that time to one day. Okay. Actually, I would like to minimize that time to less than a day. I want the breakthroughs that you get in, in after yoga over the period of 12 years. Ain't nobody got the time, right? People drop off and so on because they get discouraged and so on. I understand that it's character building and so on, but I do believe, and I'll tell you, spirituality on the whole, the esoteric world on the whole is people are losing interest because it's work. It's not fun. Yes. Right. And that's my main problem. Okay. So people are dropping off. They come onto the spiritual path. They, they drop off. I understand that those that stay, they are disciplined and whatever else. But the reason why they don't stay is because they're not getting anywhere. But if you bring people into communion with themselves, immediately <coughs> we get an idea of what can happen yeah god do you know that that first skim that we do david we call it, i saw i call it in my mind the first skim the initial skim it's when we all get there together and our psychic awarenesses are going bing 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 and the machine's on right. and we're looking at what's obvious what's there i mean that alone in that first hour we remove what would take people decades to remove going to various healers and you know but then after that is the depths and after that that's that real life-changing stuff where you're not just skimming off the and we call it a surface it's not some of it's things that are deep inside but but you know it's the first initial treatment and then after that it just snowballs and, and you're getting to that that point where it literally changes people's lives and you can see it it's if powerful. people could experience the mystical just for a fraction of a second they would remain interested because they're always going to want to try to get back there and exactly. stay in that space. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. And that's where we're heading towards. I couldn't care less about the body effects. Okay. I could care less about the body effects, but I care less about the body effects than I care about people all of a sudden realizing, oh shit, I'm a human being. I'm a spiritual <laughs> being. Yay. If you, if you could get them to experience that, like just for a fraction of a second, then you have a, spiritual student for life yeah. right because they don't know the difference right and you couple that with the physical stuff because like richard after his first day he was like two inches taller <laughs> it was, do you remember he's yeah. a big man yeah. he's a big yeah. man yeah. <laughs> his, his neck was like this that, that was, funny. Day, he was, that was actually like that. funny to look at because i, I know he's too. yeah she actually was two half inches taller yeah yeah so Richard, guys, Richard's not actually on, uh, he's not able to get on. So I'll just quickly share the experience we had with him. So when he came yeah. to the combine, he came in with a hunch and he was like bent over and I looked at him and I like held his back up and I was like, the, it, the spine was just bent and he went through the system and, and he went through the gun and all the work we did and he grew like two inch taller and his <laughs> spine was straight and his, like, his shoulders went into the correct position and it was like, holy shit. 
Like he when came through that door with a hunchback because Richard's a labourer, so he's digging all the time. So there's huge tension going up the spinal area. And he came and he be- was bent. And as he left, he was straight. And just to see that, I was like, holy shit, yeah. man, look at that. Like, <laughs> that without all it completely the changed his form. Like, yeah. Yeah. And more of the soul was actually able to get into his body because he went through such a release that the pheromones started coming through on the last few sessions and more yeah. of the spirit was able to be grounded in him. He didn't have any of that fogginess, that overthinking. He actually said, I feel free. I'm not overthinking, yeah. I'm not thinking about other stuff. There's just complete silence around me. And that's when I looked and I was like, guys, this is just fucking incredible. Like, yeah. just look at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I have an interesting little story to share. When I first met David and I was showing him all the different pieces, parts, I'm like, hey, I have a hyperbaric chamber. And he's like, what? And it was like <laughs> throwing off my monster truck to a guy. <laughs> or the, the, the same yeah, guy yeah, yeah. Same guy like, <laughs> I got this Porsche I got to show you. It was the coolest thing. He's like, you have a hyperbaric chamber? Yes. Come look at it. (laughs) (laughs) A month after I was in Key Largo, Florida, learning to become a hyperbaric oxygen therapy. um, um, Yeah. (laughs) With all the the special forces guys. With all those special forces guys, too. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I went to train with the U.S. Navy to learn this stuff. That was funny as hell. It was so funny. He's like, you have a hyperbaric chamber? I'm like, why, yes, I do. Because I know what that is. And I know what you use it for. Yeah. (laughs) Just to show off. The possibilities are endless. He got got every word I was saying. I didn't have to slow down talking. It was, 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 oh, my God. It was like, freedom. Somebody understands. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I get it. David, the human AI. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) He is. Yeah. Full on, <laughs> full on. You yeah. think he was the to become source connected, huh? One of those so, AIs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When the AI starts meditating and telling all about, I am making, I am making the first psychic AI. I'm not kidding. I'm doing it, right? <laughs> so, I think a lot of people um, would want to know when next we're having these sessions. For those of you who are on mainland USA, we're going to plan something for you guys. We absolutely are, right? But for those of you who are in, in the UK, oh, I'm coming across there eventually. You know that. <laughs> you think you're going to leave me out of that fun? No, absolutely. Yeah. We're going to get you on the table, David, as well. I can't wait. Yeah, we are. With a we bunch are. of guns. <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of hands. <laughs> a bunch of something. Yeah, you wait. <laughs> All right, guys. Two so guns, we're, we're, we're at the end of ultra, 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 go ahead. Guns and an ultrasound therapy at the same time. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait. So we're coming to the end of the show now, guys. So thank you all for coming on this incredible journey. It's been really fun. Um, so Matty, how do people get hold of you for sessions, bro? Okay, you just head over to um, twofeathersmedicine.com and click on my name and then there's a link there to have a private session with me there's a few small light language products on there as well yeah head over to twofeathersmedicine.com thank you laura yeah i'm on twofeathersmedicine.com you can book there or just email me laura two feathers with the number two at gmail.com and if you're interested we will be in york once again for the combined therapies next year so we will be there Um, I think it's the 15th of January for a couple of weeks. So again, we're doing one, two, three, four and five day packages. Um, We are in the process of getting a website sorted. So you will actually be able to book through the website eventually. But if you actually, if you're interested and you want to get your name down for it, then just email me for the moment and I can send you details of what we do. And hopefully we'll be able to add some of the new uh, modalities we were talking about today as well in the future. So would love to see you there, guys, uh, yeah. next year. And thank you, Sam, so and the Laura, lovely Lily for coming on. So, Sorry? Yeah, Laura, just Laura two feathers at gmail.com is, is yeah. the... Uh, yes. Yeah. David? Yeah. Yes, first of all, I'd like to thank these two ladies for coming on. You guys are brave. <laughs> Lily, keep your chin up. And so, <laughs> right. And so, 
And so you can contact me at info at unifiedhealthsystems.com. I um, this has been fun, guys. We really need to do this more often, right? But uh, yeah, contact me. And if you all need any information about the air deck, uh, that's there. Or we, we pretty much detailed everything in the system in that air deck. So go check it out. Take care. Thank you. And Andrew. Uh, you guys know who I am. You go to my website, andrewbartzis.com. You can look at the various products that we've all put together. And you can find out we will be coming this coming Thursday. We will have a show which will be, be doing a specific live healing meditation for everyone. So come on and join us. And then this Friday, we'll be running our World of Warcraft game stream also. So I look forward to seeing you there for the healing meditation or the gaming show. And then we'll be back this coming Tuesday for another Talking Stick show. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you, Andrew. And if anybody would like soul surgery sessions, visit daletobin.com. I'm also going to be doing up and coming training in the middle of November. Uh, so again, thank you. And before we go, I just want any last words, Lily, Sam, we'll start with you, Lily. Any last words to close? Um, if you feel cool to do the combined therapies, just go for it. It's really fun and it will it will change your life. <laughs> Thank you, Lily. Sam? Just, there's so much peace and freedom to have and I literally feel like I can fly. So it, it, these guys work miracles, miracles. So my heart felt, my heartfelt thanks to them. And like, just love yourself. Go get some therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Yeah. Thank you, Lily. <laughs> Yep. Thank you, everybody. everyone. Good Thank night. You. Good night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tschüss.